Try to imagine being suddenly arrested in the middle of the night and taken to an unknown location kept secret from family and friends. You are not told the charges against you or the identity of your accusers, who remain unknown and thus immune from any examination to discover whether they are telling the truth. Whatever the accusation, it is accepted as fact that you are guilty without trial. The only trial will be by the most ingeniously painful torture that continues until you confess to that unnamed crime or heresy of which you have been accused. Imagine the torment of dislocated joints, torn and seared flesh, internal injuries, broken bones on the rack and other devices mended by doctors so they could be torn asunder again by fresh torture. Eventually, you would confess to anything to end the torment. But no matter what you confess, it never fits the secret accusation. So the torture continues until at last you expire from the unbearable trauma. Such was the fate of millions. These were real people, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons, and daughters, all with hopes and dreams, with passions and feelings, and many with a faith that could not be broken by torture or fire. Remember that this terror, this evil of such proportions that it is unimaginable today, was carried on for centuries in the name of Christ by the command of those who claim to be the vicars of Christ. They are still honored with that title by this church, which has never admitted that the inquisitions were wrong. She has not repented or apologized, and she dares to pose even today as the supreme teacher and example of morals and truth. Remember also that the doctrines which supported the Inquisitions remain in force within the Roman Catholic Church even at the present time.